So hello and welcome back to the channel once again. My name is Henry and this is Architect Piper. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through D5 render. So in today's course, we are going to be specifically covering render settings. So I know a lot of times when people come newly into D5, they'll be like tweaking the settings again and again, going back and forth, trying to get that perfect point in their render effect. So in today's video, I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step process you can be using consistently for your daytime render images in D5 render. So what are you waiting for? Make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell to get notified. You can also check up some of my full Revit tutorial courses and also full D5 courses to improve your skills in modeling and visualization. Without out of the way, let's start the video. Okay, first off, the first thing to do when it comes to your render settings is by the, before you start render settings, you must have completed your composition in your project. Okay, so as you can see, in the case of this project, I've completely filled out the whole scenery. So if you want to learn how to um, work on your composition, you can check out my full D5 render tutorial course. In that video, I covered almost everything about D5 render from the camera shot to the composition to everything you need. Okay, but this video was specifically going to tackle render effect okay so the first thing to do this is how this is basically d5 renders default scenery i've not yet edited anything so the first thing to do is we are going to turn off our lights because since we have decided that we are going to be doing a daytime render we need to turn off the artificial light so i'm just going to go over around this layer icon and i'm going to click on this eye icon to turn off the lights so now we have done this we are going to make sure after every effect we do we are going to hover around here and click on this update to update this scenery so that out of the way we are now going to go to effect the first thing we are going to do under effect is we are going to turn off this exposure this auto icon in this exposure so what this does normally it's kind of adjust the exposure depending on the view so i don't think leaving it on is the best thing so we just turn it off so we're now going to reduce the exposure first by up to 0 0.0 minus 0 0.102 to minus 0 0.13 so we can just leave it as minus 0 0.1 then after doing that we are going to increase the contrast a bit to 0 0.07 the highlight is fine the shadows we can leave it at 0 0.5 the white balance since it's a daytime render we want it to be a bit warm so we are going to increase it to let's say about 6900 or 6800 so let's just go with 6800 so the tints we are going to increase the tint to about 0 0.06 the bloom we are going to leave the bloom at 0 0.21 then the vignette, we are going to increase the vignette amount to about 0 0.3. Then we are also going to touch the saturation a bit to 0 0.04. Just something subtle like that. Then now we are now going to go, you can see the scene is very dark. You will be asking me, what am I doing? So we are going to go to environment. Then we are going to change this from GeoSky. We are going to click on this custom zone. So once we've clicked on this custom zone, we are first going to go over to this sunlight intensity bar and we're going to drag it to about 0 0.8. Then the sun disk um, radius, we're going to increase the amount to about 7.3 or let's say somewhere 6.5 somewhere around that region then the altitude we are going to reduce the altitude to about 25 so the why the altitude is at 25 is because the we put the sun in an angular position where it creates some nice shadows okay so we are still going to work on shadows because while working on shadows we still need to move some trees to get a desired effect then we're not going to go over to this cloud the cloud is on we are going to increase the cloud amount to about 0 0.75 to 0 0.8 okay so this cloud amount it kind of reduces the amount of blue sky reflection we have on the scenery okay so we are now going to reduce the density a bit to about 0 0.36 then we are going to scroll down and make sure we turn on wind so the reason why i love turning on wind initially my setting is for when i'm animating it's going to be helpful later so i can just max out the wind it doesn't affect still renders in any way so now we have done these basic ones we are going to go over around there and we're going to update this so we are not yet done we are just getting to where we want so we're not going to go to this azimuth angle that is still zero that looks like i forgot but i just left it that way we're not going to start moving it so this one is now dependent on the composition of your project for example if you rotate it this way you notice that some trees are behind the sun position here that's why it's causing some shadows here so we're going to just tweak it till we get the desired effect so usually what i usually love doing is i like an effect where the sun comes from an angle to the building so let me just adjust this leave this at 34 first then update this in first so if i click on p okay 
let me just click on change this and i increase the speed of this camera movement you are going to see that the sun in this scenery is somewhere here so it's coming from here and casting throwing some shadows here so what we can do if we want to give this um, scene some nice shadow effect we can click on this tree here and just adjust the position or we can even decide to add a soft tree that used to cast some very soft shadows so for that we are going to go under nature we are now going to go into broadleaf plants and there's this specific tree i usually use to create soft shadows so you need to scroll down so we are going to be using this broadleaf 51 we are going to click on it and we're just going to place the tree so once i place this tree i'm going to click on escape select it then i'm just going to move it so it's casting a shadow directly on the building so i can place this here so regardless of whether i place this on the road the thing i'm focusing on is this particular scene so i'm just going to be trying to tweak the environment till i get the desired effect for this scene so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to adjust this this tree here and be looking as it's casting some shadows on the building so now that I'm doing this, I'm going to go back to environment. Then I'm just going to do some extra little touches like reduce the shadow amount, um, increase the speed of the cloud, or just rather change the position of the cloud by adjusting the height higher. So I'll be still be seeing some spaces in between the cloud. Then I can now control this azimuth angle. So the whole idea now is to get a, a scenery where there will be some shadows casting on the building itself and some shadows on the environment. So I'm just trying to strike that balance here. So I think we'll stop at 31. So I'm just going to update this scene and we're going to render it. So I'm just going to save the name, leave it as scene 1, then we're going to click on save. Then let's just wait and see how the render comes out. Okay, so now the render is ready. We're just going to click on open folder location. So we're now going to see what we did. Okay, you can see the render. I kind of feel this have a little bit of overexposure, so we can always work on that. You can now post-produce this render, touch a little bit of things. You can even go back to the rendered view, reduce the exposure overall. Like me personally, I feel the exposure is too much, so we're just going to reduce the exposure a bit. Then we're going to also increase the contrast. Then we're going to go to this environment and reduce the azimuth angle a bit. Then we can just update it and we can just click on render and um, replace it and save. All right, so we're just going to click on open folder. So we're going to see the render folder and we're just going to open the scene. Okay, so you can see the render. I think I'm very satisfied with this outcome. So basically, these are the things you just need to tweak. And sometimes in D5 render, if you are not okay with the effect, you can just go back, adjust some things to get that desired effect in your renders. So I hope this video is helpful and you have learned a thing or two that you can be using to get your sharp daylight scenery in D5 render. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to this channel for more content like this, and we'll see you again in the next video. Thank you 